right, how do I make this bigger? All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, you know what? Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, can't tell you how much this means to our leadership team when you guys participate in things like this. Um, you've taken the time to invest in yourself and your business. Um, our leadership team takes hours and hours of time putting all these things together for you guys. So when you actually participate in it, it makes us feel real good. So uh, starting off today, I just want to applaud you for being here. Yeah, we can all do that. Um, so listen up today, you guys. The stuff we're going to talk to you today about um, can quite literally change your life, can change your business. Um, it did for me. Um, so tell you a little bit of a story um, to start off today. Uh, when I first started out in this business many, many moons ago, um, I uh, started off with a broker who uh, talked me into getting this into the business. And about a week before I was going to take my test, I went and had lunch with him and uh, had a great conversation with him. And at the end of the conversation, he said, well, Kenan, I got uh, some bad news, kind of. Uh, my wife and I were going to move back to Israel. True story. And he says, don't worry, I'll still be able to mentor you. I'll still be able to coach you and show you how to run your business. Well, it's literally the opposite side of the globe. So as a new agent, um, you know, when you need an answer, you need an answer pretty quickly, not 12 hours later. Um, so that lasted about a month and a half. And then I moved to my second brokerage. Um, really loved that broker. Every time I go back to Austin, um, I usually have lunch with him still. Great guy. Um, but I still wasn't getting that coaching, that mentoring. I didn't have that camaraderie or that culture and, that I needed to succeed and to, to achieve the, the massive goals that I had for myself in this business. Um, I stayed there for about a year and a half. And so, you know, we're two years into my, my real estate career and I, I hopped to my third brokerage and that's where I met my mentors. Um, these two ladies, they were my team leads. They showed me how to run my business like a business. They showed me how to, 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 to take control of my schedule and, and time block my day. And the first full year that I was with them, I tripled my business. I want you to think about that real quick. Think about what your GCI is going to be this year. What would it look like if you tripled it? That is life-changing money, quite literally, right? And that was just me taking control of my business, taking control of my schedule and running my business like a business on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Um, so part of what I do every single day and what I've done every single day for over a decade now is my morning routine. Now, I know a lot of you out there are probably sitting there like, oh gosh, he's going to talk about a morning routine. I'm not a morning person. That's BS, guys. There's no such thing as morning people and night people. There's just habits that you've created over a lifetime and they can all change. Okay. Um, I would highly advise you to start establishing your day every single morning. That is part of a good schedule is establishing your day. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about my morning routine personally. Um, if you have ev not read The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents, I would advise you to do that. It's an easy read, guys. It's super easy, but it'll give you some really great ideas on how you can start your day off the right way, okay? Um, I wanted to touch on one more thing real quick. Um, so this is the fourth brokerage that I've been a part of. Um, before I was a managing director, I was a full-time production agent just like you guys. And the leadership team that you have within this organization with Distinctive Properties and Mid-America, that's not the norm, you guys. It's not. If you've got agents in your office that came from another brokerage, ask them. It's not. If this was the first brokerage that you came upon when you took your, your test, consider yourself very fortunate. Um, because what we do is it's not the norm. We pour into you guys. So when you guys attend things like this and you succeed, guys, that, that, that's what gets us jazzed. All right. So again, th thank you for being here. Um, so I'm not going to give you the answers to that entire graph to fill out your entire day today. If that's what you were hoping for, that's not going to happen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to structure your day and how to organize your business to where you can take that organization and you can use that to time block your day. Um, so part of my morning routine every day is my planner. 
I know we're living in a digital world this, uh, right now, you guys, but I, I still write things down on a daily basis within my planner, okay? Um, I'm going to show you kind of how I do that. And then when, when you see the way that I, I structure all this stuff, you're going to see how I can take my current business and plug in throughout my day, right? Um, which, to be honest, it, it keeps me on track. It helps me give better service. I have perfect follow-up. I don't miss things, Okay. Um, so this is a simple planner that I've been using for a long, long time. I get it on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks, you guys. And I'll, I'll send the link over to Rachel. She can send it to all you guys. So when you start out, you have three different uh, sections in it. Your first one is just your, your year or your month, right? You look that, look at that for maybe two seconds, just to kind of see what's going on. But all the magic happens in your week. Okay. Get this right. Sorry. Just want to make sure you guys can see this. So this is the way that I set my stuff up. So one side, this is my pipeline you guys. All right. So this is everybody that I know is going to close in the next three to six months. I've got their names, their email addresses, their phone numbers, um, you know, their, their, their criteria, their timeline, everything right there. And so when I start my day, that's where I start. All of this stuff should fill up your day, your current business, or at least a majority of it. I've got my under contracts and I've got my currently closed for the year. Okay. So when I look through that, I can see inspection dates. I can see lender names, title names, phone numbers, all of that stuff in a cohesive spot, right? Um, I know you can do that digitally. I get it. I like writing it down. There's science behind it. You write something down, you remember it a little bit better, right? Um, so when I go through here, I go over to my actual day, right? And I can actually time block my whole day just with my current business, Right. And then I've got some random things that I need to get done here. I've got an Amazon package I needed to, to, to return over here. What I'm what I'm trying to get at, guys, is if every morning part of my morning routine is looking at that. Right. It's a little later in the morning. I've got stuff that I do first. But when I look through that, it reminds me of all the people that I'm trying to take care of and give exceptional service to on a daily basis. OK. And with that information, I can go through and I can time block my entire day with everything that needs to get done. Right. So now let's get to our workbook, building out the perfect schedule, the very top thing up there. Why does it matter? Well, I think we've we've kind of gone over that right now. It can obviously change your life if you're you're doing it the right way. Time management, client satisfaction, um, you know, having perfect follow up and uh, being on time with things. When you say you're going to call somebody at two o'clock tomorrow, you call somebody at two o'clock tomorrow. OK, that's part of our professionalism that we offer. All right. Um, it's going to increase your productivity and efficiency and decrease distractions throughout your day. Um, your adaptability and flexibility, it's also going to help with that because you can easily move things around if they're scheduled out. Um, your work life balance. Listen, one of our pillars is family within this organization, and it should always come first before your business. All right. So make sure that you are time blocking your family into each day. Um, goal achievement. Uh, I think Jimmy touched on this uh, last week. And uh, if you have not written out your one year, five year and 10 year plan, I would highly encourage you do that. Um, write out the goal that you have for five years from now. Where do you want to be? And then sit down and write out the tangible steps to get there. And part of your time blocking each day, maybe you take one of those tangible steps and you knock it off. Right. And uh, if you're consistent with that in five years, you will achieve your goal. Right. Consistency is going to be key with everything that we do in this business. Um, so when we go down a little bit, it says five things that you should be doing daily. Well, I, I think it should be doing consistently on a daily basis. That's what that really should say. Um, I sent Rachel a list of prospecting ideas, education ideas and marketing ideas that you guys can use. And she'll send that out to every one of you. Um, I'll go through just a few of these because I do want to kind of touch on a couple of them. Um, so the first one with prospecting, obviously it's staying in flow with your SOI, right? Uh, flow, I think is kind of a ninja term. I'm sure we've got quite a few ninjas out there, um, right now. I, I was, I was one of them just a heads up, uh, but staying in flow with your SOI. Part of that is picking up the phone. That's a big, big deal. You guys, um, I know many of you out there are probably like, gosh, they don't, I don't want to pick up the phone and call. They don't want to hear from me. If you go into it with that mindset, you're probably right, just to be completely honest with you. Um, when I would make my phone calls, which I did on a daily basis, 
I would sit down before I made those calls and I would just ask myself, how am I going to solve a problem for this person today? How am I going to be of service? How am I going to make this person's day better? Right. You get into that mindset of service before you start those phone calls. The conversation is completely different. And those people that you're calling regularly, they start to look at their phone. And instead of being like, why is Kenan calling me? They say, oh, Kenan's calling me. Right. Because you changed the narrative. Right. You changed your mindset and you're, you're going into that conversation. You know, obviously the four questions, but but be genuine about it. You want to know what's going on in their lives. Right. But you have to schedule that on a daily basis. And the way that I would do that. So I want everyone in my SOI to hear from me personally every other month, like a phone call, not a text message, not an email. I want them to hear from me personally. Now, this isn't your hot list or your people that are under contract. These are just the general people that you know, the the acquaintances that you 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 have in your SOI, right? And so, you know, it, what you want to do is you want to kind of divide that up, right? We've got, you know, roughly 20 days of work days each month, right? So within two months, that's 40, 40 days in a month. So divide however many people that you have in your SOI by 40, and that's the how many people that you have to contact each day, okay? Remember what Jimmy said, it's in the math, right? And if you do that right, when you get to the end of that two-month period, you're back at the first round of people that you called. And if you're using CBIQ correctly, when you open it up on that second month, you're going to have that dozen or so people right there in red it says you have to call them. You can go back in, see what you talked about two months ago, maybe stalk them on Facebook for a couple of minutes, see what's going on in their lives. And then you call them again and you ask them, hey, what's been going on? I was just thinking about you the other day. Easy conversations, you guys, but it has to be part of your daily time blocking, calling your SOI. Um, door knocking, social media, um, social media prospecting. Are we all doing that on a daily basis? That doesn't mean you're just scrolling, you guys. So social media prospecting, what that actually means, you want to go in as your business profile and you want to like every every single post and you want to comment minimally four words on every post. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring you to the top of their algorithm, right? Because what's what's the point of us posting all this great material on your behalf if nobody's seeing it? It's a great question. So spend 15, maybe 30 minutes a day just going through your social media. Like everything, comment minimally four words. That way, when we're posting this stuff for you, they're actually seeing it. It's at the top of their thread because if you're not interacting with them at all, they're probably not seeing any of your stuff, which makes it pointless, right? Um, you know, volunteering, attending community events, uh, join clubs, associations, you know, create a B&I group, you know, join the Chamber of Commerce, whatever it may be. Get out there in your community and network with people, right? Our goal is to put two new people into our SOI every single week. You're not going to do that sitting on the couch, okay? Get off the couch, go network, go volunteer, join clubs, do things where you're going to meet people, right? Um, moving on down, education. I'm going to touch on this because it was an amazing experience. Um, I got to go to Gen Blue for the first time this year um, ever. And um, obviously, I, I got a ton out of it as a leader. And I was on the leadership track, taking the leadership classes. But throughout the entire event that we were there, I could not help but think, my gosh, I wish I would have attended this as an agent. The amount of value that you will get out of that conference, and I'm not exaggerating, it's, it is overwhelming, unparalleled, Okay. I would highly advise you do it next year, okay? You know, we talk about lead buckets, right? We want to have minimally four to seven lead buckets that we're putting time, money, and effort into on a daily basis. Referrals are a lead bucket. So go down to that conference. There's over 2,000 real estate agents there from across the country. Meet as many as you can and get their cards. And, you know, I've got a great script for you guys that you can send to them once you do, and it works. But getting those referrals from all over the country is just another lead bucket for you. OK, my light turned off in here, so I'm going to be real bright. Um, education wise, obviously, CE courses. We'll talk about when you should be scheduling that podcast. I'm a huge fan of Bigger Pockets. I love that podcast. If you don't if you don't know what it is, I highly advise you go out there. It'll teach you about investing. Um, if you don't want to invest in real estate, it'll help you be a better real estate professional for investors without a doubt. OK, Um you know, joining your your local association as a, a volunteer on their committee. That's another great way that you can get education. Coaching. Guys, we give it away for free. 
seriously. And here's the statistic on this, if you haven't heard this yet, but the agents that go through our coaching program on average increase their GCI by 70.7%. Okay. You can do the math on your own GCI and what that looks like. If you are not volunteering for our education, what are you doing? Do you not want to grow your business? Do it. Okay. We'll have another one coming up early next year. Um, heading on down to marketing. So what's great about the marketing piece on this is most of it's done for you guys. Um, and again, this is not the norm for most brokerages, okay? We have a full-fledged marketing department. Um, if you are taking full advantage and leveraging that marketing department, it's probably saving you 10 to 20 grand a year, okay? That's just the added value that we give you guys, all right? Please leverage the marketing department. Um, we do custom website. We do your social media for you. Video is king, guys. All right. We need to be doing minimally three reels a week. And we need to do them consistently. And you can put them on your schedule. All right. That way you'd always do them. Um, Google My Business. If you do not have a Google My Business page and it is not up, you need to reach out to your managing director or your AC and have a conversation. Okay. Because that needs to most certainly be a part of your, your plethora of uh, tools that you're using. And then direct mailers. We just started a new direct mailer um, thing. I don't know exactly what you want to call it, um, but I would highly advise you to utilize that, you guys. All right. These are all tools that you can use. All right. Appointments. So appointments are king, right? That's where we get our business. So we want to have coffee dates on a daily basis. Um, we want to have listing appointments, buyer appointments, showings, all right? We want to be out there in the community doing things on a daily basis, and you got to schedule it, all right? Delivering exceptional service. What I want you to write down there is consistent communication and perfect follow-up. It's kind of a lost art, you guys. No communication is too small, all right? There's going to be two, three weeks during a transaction where you don't really have anything to report, right? So call the lender, call the title company, ask them how it's going, right? More than likely, they're probably going to be like, everything's good, man. We're on schedule, blah, blah, blah. That way you can call your client maybe once a week and let them know, hey, I just spoke with the lender. I just spoke with our title company. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Everything's on schedule. We're good to close on the 22nd, whatever it may be. That little bit of communication, regardless of how small, that That is our professionalism, okay? That is raising the bar on the experience that we are giving our clients because most agents don't do it, right? Once, they, once they're done, they're done. They, they're hands off. Well, we'll get to the closing table. I'll, I'll see you in a few, few weeks, right? And be consistent with it. All right. I'm flying through here. This is awesome. So let's get to our schedule, you guys. So... The way that I want to do this today for you guys is I want to go over kind of how you establish your day on a daily basis. So when they first sent us over these books, um, this little schedule that you had went from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I asked them to make it 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. You're welcome. So I start my day every every day at 5, 5 a.m. My alarm goes off. I do not hit the snooze button. I roll out of bed and the first thing I do, I go grab a cup of coffee because I would uh, kill people without coffee. And I sit down and I read for 30 minutes every single morning. The first thing I do to start my day is I exercise my brain, okay? I cannot tell you how much sharper, quick-witted, you'll speak more eloquently if you will do this, all right? I, I, I promise you, I've done it myself. Right. When I when I go off of my morning routine for a while and come back to it, I can feel the difference. I can feel the difference in the way that I communicate. And, and that's what we do on a daily basis. Right. Now, that's that's one of the first things people judge you on is your communication. OK, let's be quick witted. Let's be sharp. Let's be on it every day. So I start my day off with about 30 minutes of reading. Um, something I have been slacking with is immediately after that, I usually will do this little meditation or I'll foam roll one or the other. But part of that little meditation and foam roll, and all of you ninjas out there are going to love this, is my affirmations. OK, there's science behind that, you guys. All right. I'm not I'm not just cuckoo. All right. Speaking your affirmations on a daily basis, it, it will help you achieve your goals 110 percent. 
All right. Um, so I take about 10 minutes there and I, I kind of go in silence and I just say my affirmations over and over and over. Um, I leave my house at around 550 and I get to the gym around 6 a.m. I'm there for about an hour and a half every day, five days a week without fail. Um, you guys can have your own exercise routine. I don't care what it is. Just get your blood pumping in the morning. Those of you that have kids, this schedule is going to be a little different for you, but you can add these things in wherever that wherever you can throughout the day. Obviously, maybe you get up and you get some of this done and then you got to take the kid to school. Maybe you come back and then you finish out your morning routine. OK, but don't use it as an excuse. All right. Um, I get done with my exercise and I get home and um, I have my breakfast. During that breakfast, I usually check emails and then I sit down and with my planner and I plan out my day. OK, this is the big part. Um, I review my current business, everything I have under contract. I review all of my pipeline to see if there's things that I need to do, communication that I need to get done, um, you know, different appointments that I may need to schedule on my day. And uh, once I finish that, that's around 9 a.m. when I finish that every day. Um, now, as a realtor, so it's a little different from me now. So I'm going to speak to you guys as if I'm still in full time production with you. OK, um, I have a coffee date every morning. OK, remember, remember, Jimmy saying we need a certain amount of communication and conversations every single day. We need a certain amount of appointments every single week to be able to achieve our goals. Set a coffee date every day. So I do that on Sundays. So on Sunday, I will call my SOI and try to schedule coffee dates for around that 9 a.m. spot. Uh, Monday through Friday, I need to get that scheduled. I don't stop calling until I fill up my entire week from 9 a.m. to about 9.30, 9.45. Monday through Friday is a coffee date. Now, What's going to happen is you're cruising through your SOI or people maybe you met that week trying to, to schedule those up. Inevitably, people are going to be like, well, I don't I don't really have time this week to, to sit down with you. But like, well, what about next week? Right. So you're going to probably fill up half the next week in the next week, just trying to fill up this week, which saves you time. Right. But again, be consistent with that every single day. You're having that coffee date. It will make a huge difference in your business. I promise. Um, I'm going to finish up that coffee date and I'm going to head to the office. OK, from about 10 a.m. to usually 11, I'm going to call my SOI. OK, this is important. You have to do it every day, every single day. Now, maybe that time doesn't work for you. I think statistically speaking, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and from 530 to 630 p.m., statistically, that's when most people will answer the phone. OK, um, so you can schedule that how you want, but that has to be a part of your schedule every single day without fail. OK, and if you don't have a very big SOI, it may be five people a day. That's it. You cannot tell me you don't have time to call five people a day. And it's it's guys, you got to get it out of your mindset that you're being a pest or you're going to be rejected. OK, you know, there, there are going to be people that are in your SOI or people that are friends that that don't agree with what you're doing, think it's annoying or, um, you know, they, they think you're being salesy or think you're being a pest. Those aren't your people. You'll get new people. And I mean that. Your people want you to succeed. If you have people around you that you feel like you're being judged so you can't be your full potential in this business, get rid of them. That's baggage, guys. You've got goals in this business. Let's take it to another level. Um, so from 11 o'clock to noon, that's when I would normally do my Facebook Reels. We're going to batch those. OK, I'm going to post one right there and then I'm going to go to lunch and I'm going to listen usually to my Bigger Pockets podcast. That's usually my go to. Right. Um, so that's my established morning right there all the way to 1 p.m. And that is consistent on a daily basis. Now, yours is going to look different. All right. Because your business is different from everybody else's business. All right. Real estate is unpredictable. Everybody's stuff changes on a daily basis. You may have to adapt to that stuff. But from usually the afternoons are going to be for appointments. OK, um, so usually from about one to six, I'm going to work within my current business and I'm going to be doing showings. I'm going to be doing closings. Um, you know, that's I'm going to work on my future goals as well. But that's that's my time to work with my people right there, right? The first half of my day, that's working with, for working on my businesses and working in my business, right? The second half of my day is working with my people, okay? I just want to make that, that perfectly clear. Um, 
So again, on Sunday, so you're doing, you're scheduling your coffee dates every Sunday. Something else that I would advise you to do is, is look for your educational opportunities on Sunday as well. Maybe you go on, on CBU and you, you figure out what class you're going to take that week and you add that into the schedule on Sunday, right? That's already time blocked. It's done. You know, it doesn't go away. You can't move it, right? Um, I would also tell you to look at your planner or look at whatever you're, you're putting all of your people on. So for me, every Sunday, I rewrite all of my current business, my current business, my under contract, and my closed business for the year. And by rewriting that, it's it's just getting more ingrained into my brain, okay? Exceptional service is something that we don't just talk about with distinctive properties in mid-America, okay? It is a must. It is what we do. It's how we differentiate ourselves, okay? And so being so in tune with your business that it's just second nature. You know exactly what's coming. You can predict the future for your clients. People are going to remember that and they're going to use you. All right. We have any questions? I think Shawnee, I believe Shawnee answered it, but Durango was asking um, about uh, the follow-up for consistent communication and what, and this was about 15 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago. And is it perfect follow-up, consistent communication and perfect follow-up? Oh, yes. I believe that's what it was. Okay. I want to tell you, awesome. let me not tell you wrong. It consistent, was, I wrote it down. I retained consistent it. Consistent communication and perfect follow-up. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a lost art in this business, which is kind of sad. I know every one of you has worked with an agent that you feel like you're answering the questions for their clients, right? How much fun is that? And then you work with those agents that are on top of their business. They know what's going on. They're answering the questions before it even gets asked. That's got to be you, you guys. And part of that is scheduling out your day perfectly. Okay. Um, so again, I would highly advise you guys use this. Write down your current business, your closed business, and your under contract. Okay. By doing that, you're going to remember it better. And you're going to be able to time block your day throughout, right? So again, I can't I can't give you the answers to all of those blocks for time blocking, okay? Um, I am going to have Rachel send you over all of the suggestions that I have for marketing prospecting. Um, and if you're new to this business, a big part of your time blocking is going to be education, marketing, and prospecting versus as you start to progress throughout your career, a big part of your business, a chunk of it starts to turn more into appointments, but in the beginning, you still have to get through your day and make sure you're scheduling everything perfectly and you're staying on top of it, okay? Do not let people disrupt your day, all right? I can't tell you how many times I get the, uh, you got a minutes. I can see all of my people on here going, oh, that was me. But uh, you, you, you just got to keep trucking, you guys. Um, and, and again, the, the morning routine, I, I can't tell you how much that changed my life. And I, I hope that you guys take advantage of that. I really do. Um, any other questions? Yeah, Kenan, they, uh, the question is, when do you sleep? <laughs> I, uh, so I, I, I fall asleep usually around 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kind of an old person. But um, to be completely honest with you, it's because I work hard. Um, you know, uh, I, I there, there's most certainly a Bible verse that I can't think of exactly how it goes. Um, but essentially, the, the idle hands of the devil's work, right? So if you guys will will work your ass off all day long and make sure that you're scheduled out, there shouldn't be a time where you're like, oh, I'm going to scroll on Instagram for a couple of hours and see what kind of reels I can see today. That's garbage. That's a waste of your time and a waste of your brain, brain, brain power, okay? Um, but when I get home in the afternoons and evenings, I'm wiped, guys. Um, I make dinner for my my beautiful wife, and um, I am usually in the chair asleep by 7.45 to 8.30. She's usually, you know, the one that's like, hey, you want to watch this? And I'm like, sure, put it on. It's great. <laughs> anyway, what other questions do you guys have? Um, Kim asked, what's the investing podcast, but someone else had taken notes and they said bigger pockets. Yeah. It's one of my faves. You guys, again, even if you're not like a wanting to be a real estate investor, if you work with investors, 
it's a it's a great educational opportunity for you guys. It, there's so many just success stories or 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 you know stories of people that have struggled and made it through, and you're going to learn quite a bit from that podcast. Okay, highly advise. And then the Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents. It's by Hel- by Hill Elrod because the Miracle Morning was a life changer in my life too, Kenan. Huge, yep. huge. Makes a big difference. Um. Okay. Two more questions. Can you relist your afternoon tasks really quickly? Sure. So. My afternoon tasks. So I'm going to go post coffee date. Remember, that's an everyday thing, you guys. That is a non-negotiable. Um, post coffee date, I'm going to call by SOI. Something else I would tell you guys to do. So when you're when you're calling your SOI, those people that don't answer, send them a video text. All right, and then they're inevitably going to answer. Okay. Um, so I call my SOI. I'm going to film my real estate reels for the week. I'm going to post one, and then I'm going to go to lunch and listen to my podcast, and then. From lunch on, that is going to be current business, what you're currently working in. Okay. But you won't, you don't, you're not going to be able to know all that stuff unless you are organized with your current business. Okay. If you are all over the place, you should know every date of every closing, of every inspection, of every appraisal. You should know, you should have it readily available the phone numbers for your lenders, your title companies. Um, if you're working with, with new builds, you're going to have the number for the sales rep, hopefully their cell phone number. Um, all of that stuff matters. And it goes a long way to making you look like the professional, okay, when you're on top of that stuff. Organization will help you to dictate your day. Okay. Uh, how do you stay on track when things just come up? Because we all have had those days. Sure. Yeah. So, all this again. Stuff just rolls down. Correct. Yeah. So, five o'clock and you're like, oh, my gosh. When, when you're time blocking your day, it actually allows you to to have that flexibility, right? So maybe maybe I have somebody that calls me and says, hey, Kenan, man, I just saw this house pop up and I wanted to see if you wanted to go, if you, we could go see it real quick. Absolutely, because you never say no to that, right? Um, so I'm going to take whatever I'm doing in that moment and I'm going to move that down, okay? Whatever it is, you just move it down, but it does not get forgotten, you guys. Um, Go into your schedule, move it down, add the new showing that you're going to be doing and get back to it later in the day. If you don't have time to do it later in the day because your schedule is completely full, move it to tomorrow. Okay, but it does not not get left behind ever. Nothing in your schedule does. What else? Well, Kenan, one thing I forgot to do, and maybe you'll help me out with it, but I just shared the screen. I forgot to say thank you to our sponsors and we do have some new sponsors. Same on you. So do you want to give a shout out or, or I can do the top row. You can do the bottom row. You go top row. I'll go bottom row. All right. So we have Idaho's uh, mortgage sponsor. Thank you. Blueprint home loans. Escrow professional. That's our Iowa closing company. Way to go ladies. Thank you. Um, the Distinctive Insurance Agency is a sixth state insurance sponsor. And then we have Home Warranty, who is just called Home Warranty. Wow, I've never heard of that one. That's that's very good. Thank you, Home Warranty. And then Achosa Home Warranty. They are the Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, and Missouri Home Warranty sponsor. Rock and roll. Um, bottom row. Got Kansas, our Kansas mortgage sponsor is going to be Fairway Mortgage with Leslie. Um, she's a rock star. Land Title Guaranteed Company, that's Colorado's title sponsor. Platinum Title, that's our, our title company. They rock. They are the best. Your, your title company isn't coming anywhere close. Um, <laughs> New American Funding, that's going to be Iowa and Colorado's mortgage sponsor. American Home Shield, that is actually my home warranty company. Um, six state home warranty sponsor. Thanks guys. Awesome. All right, you guys, thank you. Thank you all for attending today. We will see you next Thursday, Thursday Um, the 16th. Before you go, I need to say stuff. Oh, oh, gotcha. Well, it's going to be our final business planning with Bill Pipes and market update with Todd. So put that on your calendar or check it out on the distinctive company wide calendar, which you can find at changelivesacademy.com. Kenan. Um, I just want to preface how important this is. Um, again, 
before I started doing this, I was absolutely lost in my business. Um, you know, I was still doing, you know, that, you know, in, in the average, maybe two to 4 million a year. Um, but when I really started taking control of my schedule, um, and running my business like a business, I literally tripled it the first full year that I did it. I did it with consistency and I tripled my GCI. And then the next year I did even more. So I just want you to understand how important this is. And if you have questions about any of this, you have questions about the scheduling, you have questions about the morning routine, whatever it may be, reach out to me, okay? Your leadership team, we want you to succeed just as much, if not more than you want to succeed. I promise you, okay? That's all I got. All right, guys. See you next week. See you guys. Bye. 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 Nice job, Kenan. Thanks, Kenan.